Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rich from True Budget EDC and Prepping. Use your gear, lose your gear, because if you're not using it, you might as well lose it. So, I was just watching a video by my dude Jake at Uncommon EDC, and Jake got a, uh, a recurring box uh, of medical supplies, which is actually really cool. Um, and he did a video on it, and I will put that video in the description so you guys can go check it out and see the cool box that he got. But he did mention something on there that made me want to come back and do uh, a video in regards to what he mentioned. Um, and a lot of people um, have mentioned, talked about this. I think I've done a, I, I don't know if I've done a, uh, a video on it before, but it's on uh, the sterility of items uh, that you get for medical um you know, usage like uh, Israeli bandages, you know, hemostatic gauze, compression bandages, stuff like that. So I want to come on here and speak about that a little bit. Uh, um, I am in the medical field. I have been for nine years now, now that I think about it. Um, the best thing that anybody can ever do is always take a first aid class. I'd advise taking an advanced first aid. Uh, there's different places you could take them. AHA, you know, Red Cross does it. Sometimes you can go to your local fire department, sheriff's department. They put them out. Um, CERT, if you get involved in CERT. I am also a CERT team instructor. And, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of ways you can get first aid classes. Um, they're not very much. 60 bucks tops. Um, you'll get your CPR, your AED, um, and stuff like that along with your first aid as well. Uh, I'm certified as a healthcare provider, so I have to have a little bit different, but... Um, I work in a school as medical, mostly with children um, with special education who have severe medical needs. Uh, they need oxygen. They have cardiac and stuff like that. Um, I was volunteer fire department. Uh, I did work fire rescue, EMS. Uh, I still work with a company that does extreme sporting events. I work medical for them, EMS as well. So pretty much everything I do is indeed emergency medical stuff. So some of the things that I brought uh, out are some of the things Jake actually mentioned. Uh, about sterility. So first of all, um, I'd like to say that there was a study done with the United States Army. The government did a study with Harvard University and found out that the medicine that the Army had in stock, now they had some of this stuff in stock for years, I mean like 20, 30 years. Um, they took the medicine out, they tested it, and very little of it actually lost any potency over like 20, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. So uh, the expiration dates that they put on here are more for a sterility type of thing. Um, and companies now are actually labeling things that it's sterile unless the package is damaged. So I wanted to bring that up because um, I have a few things that are actually labeled like that. So if you can try to find things that are labeled that way, uh, it, it doesn't, these things really don't expire, right? They put expiration dates on there because it's the FDA. They do that so you can buy another one. I don't know. They're, they're worried about sterility. And to be honest with you, if you put this on me because I have an arterial bleed and it's not sterile, I don't really give a shit. I want you to stop the arterial bleed, right? But um, I do understand that that is a big thing for people. They see it and they go, holy crap, it expires, right? Um, I actually have pepper spray that had an expiration date on the bottom of it. And it's not the pepper spray that expires. Actually, they worry more about the aerosol not working. So... Um, there has been tests of pepper spray, and it's lasted well past the date uh, with the aerosol and everything else like that. So, you know what I mean? Some things have these expiration dates on there, and it freaks people out. And I just want to come on and mention some things about that. Now, this is a 6-inch Israeli bandage. There are 6-inch ones, and there are 4-inch ones. I have this in my jump bag. If you look at it right here, right, it says that it expires in 2026. If you look at it right here, it says sterility is guaranteed unless packages opened or damaged. So... I would run with that because what happens with these, these are emergency bandages. This is an Israeli bandage. It's a hemostatic control bandage. It's irradiated inside this package is another package. So it's wrapped in a package and then vacuum sealed in a different package and irradiated. I'd go with the, it's uh, sterile unless it's opened or damaged. So that will last your lifetime and it's not, you don't have to worry about it. Again, this sterility guaranteed unless packages opened or damaged um now this did have one of these stickers on it i took it off because obviously it's stupid it's not going to expire it just says two different things this has a date and then it tells you that it's sterile so i mean this i, I would just <laughs> seriously see sterile it says it um some other information on here and i did read um that they are definitely irradiated so this thing's going to be sterile for 100 years this one too um, now, let's get into some other stuff like this. This is a ETD dressing. I carry this in my pocket when I'm at school. 
when I'm on EMS uh, and whenever I'm working medical stuff, just in case I need to have some kind of a, uh, um, if I don't have a tourniquet, which I also carry, um, tourniquets are not sterile either, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but this says on it as well, for single use only, sterility guaranteed unless package is opened or damaged. So, again, this is not going to be unsterile unless you open it. Um, and even then, you're, if you have to use something that's not sterile, it's still going to work. It's going to stop bleeding, and that's your main concern here, right? I mean, yes, you want it to be sterile, but you also don't have to freak out because things say they're going to, you know, expire. So let's get into something else he was talking about. This is hemostatic gauze, right? This is Quick Clot, and this is Aliquix. So they're both made to control traumatic bleeding with a hemostatic agent that's put inside of it. Now, inside of this, this contains uh, one Z-fold bandage. It tells you about it. Um, this has kaolin. I believe it says it on here. Does it not say it? Yes, kaolin hemostatic bandage. Same as this. Quick clot is the same thing. Now, kaolin is a clay-like material that stops you from bleeding, make, induces clotting, blah, 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 hemostatic stuff, right? Hemostat is something that stops bleeding. Um, kaolin is made with a clay material. Clay, I can assure you, does not expire. Um, I'm in lots of uh, tactical med groups and stuff like that on Facebook. Um, and if you're on Facebook and you're one of my friends, let me know. I'll add you to the group that I'm in. It's all like EMS people, nurses, doctors, um, stuff like that. And they even say that the uh, <laughs> this kale and this gauze does not expire. Now, some other stuff that I have, um, this is also hemostatic agents. It's made with calcium alginate, uh, cheetosan, and kaolin. Now, cheetosan is made with shellfish. Um, it's used mostly in stopping bleeds uh, on people that have bleeding issues, you know, people on blood thinners, warfarin, coumadin, things like that. Um, it also has a nosebleed uh, one that is calcium alginate. They form like a hemostatic gel um, and it stops bleeding. Um, and I have this with me. Um, I carry it in school because we've had kids that had bleeds that they didn't stop. And I don't want to throw 12 feet of gauze on a kid when I don't have to. And I can hit them with just a hemostatic uh, gauze pad. You know what I mean? That'll stop the bleeding. Or stick this up their nose because they have a nosebleed. Lots of nosebleeds, right? So none of this expires, um, right? Uh, none of this expires. This has expiration dates on it um, normally. But they've been not putting them on there. So that just lets you know. And like I said, this says that it's all of these things say that they're, uh, they're sterile unless they're opened or damaged. So just keep that in mind that the FDA puts, you know, uh, these expiration dates on things more or less so <laughs> they can make you buy new ones. It's more to cover their own ass. I get it. If you, you do use something and it's not sterile, I mean, in a traumatic event, they, seriously, like, you know what I mean? If you're not working in a medical field um, and you use something that's not sterile to stop a bleed, I mean, your main purpose is to stop the bleed, right? I am a stop the bleed instructor. So I'm a registered stop the bleed instructor. Um, and they tell you to use a belt. They tell you to use a shirt. None of that shit is sterile, right? You got to do whatever you got to do to stop the bleed. If you're using a hemostatic bandage or hemostatic gauze or the stuff's not sterile, you know what? You got to use what you got to use, honestly, in an event that something happens and you're not in the medical field. If you're in the medical field, you know, you should probably have stuff that has labels and it is in date because that's your job, but you're better off getting things like this that says that it's sterile because if, you know, something happens and somebody gets an infection, they come back to you, you can go, bruh, it says right here that it's uh, guaranteed until, uh, you know, whatever. And then they put this on here, which is makes no sense to me. So this expires. Why does this expire if the sterility is guaranteed? So keep that in mind. That's what these companies do. Um, and they have to put this on here. Uh, because, you know, the FDA, however, North American Rescue doesn't, um, it does right here, actually, it does say, uh, what, 2023, I think this is when it was made, I don't think this is an expiration date, this is when this one was made, um, because it says it doesn't expire right on it, so, there you go, so I just wanted to come on there, oh, and always get yourself a good pair of trauma shears, Jake did mention that his kit came with trauma shears, um, I feel like the Raptors are too much, uh, there's just too much going on, they're too busy, none of that is really needed, um, you got to cut gauze, you don't need 100 things on your scissors, what you do, do need, however, is scissors, so go out, get yourself a pair of X shears, about 40 bucks to get the case, this is the inside case, uh, mostly for in-facility use, which is mostly where I am, um, and um, I work in an uh, outpatient clinic, um, as a nurse technician, nursing technician, and I also work in a school as, you know, uh, medical. So definitely pick yourself up a good pair. So just hope this helps you with the sterility thing. Definitely go check out, uh, check out Jake's uh, video. Super cool. Um, 
I didn't know they had boxes like that, a recurring thing. I always feel that it's better to make your own kit because, you know, what you're going to spend on getting one of those boxes, you can buy all of this stuff. I mean, this was like $14, $12 at the time. They went up to $14. This is like $10. Bucks. This is like $20. Bucks. These are like $6, $7, 8 between $6 and $10, and this was $9.99. Um, so all of this stuff is individually, if you're going to, you know, just you want to carry a few things, you carry this and this. You just spent 20 bucks. You got bleed stop like a mofo because you got a bunch of hemostatic gauze and you have um, an NAR. Normally, what I carry in my one pocket is these three things. These are in my jump bag, and this is in my other pocket with some other stuff. So, um, again, just uh, some ideas. Um, if anybody needs any assistance and you feel like you want to build a kit of your own and you're not sure what to do, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you know, my... Um, my information is on the about section. You can email me and I'd be happy to help you do it. And uh, that way you guys can get something. You can carry it around with you and you're not going to spend a million dollars and you can do what you got to do. You know what I mean? In case something happens. So have a good one. Check out the video by Jake.